Greetings. This video is a general introduction to the Circuit Tutor system. If your instructor is also using Wiley Plus and is at ASU, then there is another video that will explain how Circuit Tutor is integrated with Wiley Plus and Canvas. However, if you are not at ASU or you're not using Wiley Plus in your course, then this video is the only one you need to watch. So first, what is the purpose of Circuit Tutor? Basically, it is a homework system that is designed to allow you to learn uh, more efficiently and more quickly with less frustration. And we now have uh, quite a bit of data showing that that, in fact, uh, is possible. So the first thing you're going to need to do in Circuit Tutor is to uh, register if you've not already done so. If you've already done the registration process, um, then you don't need to, you can skip over this uh, step, but you will basically receive an email that looks like this and it'll have your unique registration code, which is right here in this case. Um, and what we're gonna do is to copy and paste. Now, be sure that you're using a registration code that's actually for Circuit Tutor. If you don't see the word Circuit Tutor in your email, then that email is not for Circuit Tutor and the code will not work. So for example, if you're using Wiley Plus or some other system, those codes will not help you register for Circuit Tutor. You need a code that is for Circuit Tutor and will say Circuit Tutor in the email. So I'm gonna copy and paste that code exactly as written there. And then I'm going to simply click on this uh, control click here on this website, which will take me to the place to register. Now I'm actually already logged in, so I'm going to log out. And if you were going to register, you'd see this screen and you would simply click on the button that says register. You would take that registration code and paste it directly in there. Now that's a dummy code, so it won't actually work. So I won't complete the process here. But as soon as you hit the next button, then it will ask you to enter an email, which can be any email you want um, except if you've used uh, the same email to register previously, for example, in a prior semester, if you're retaking a class, for example, then you would need to use a new email or an alias to the old email. You cannot use the same email address to create more than one account in Circuit Tutor. You would also select a password and then you would be registered in the system. Now, once you've uh, registered, um, I should mention, uh, again, that if you are repeating the course or if you change sections, for example, at the beginning of the course, then you need to have a code for the section in which you're currently registered. If you try to use an old account, then you will get zero credit for any of the work you do. Your instructor will never be able to see that work, and we do not, under any circumstances, transfer work from an old account into a new account. So you need to be sure that you have a, a, a code that is current for this semester and that will work therefore to give you actual credit for your work because we'd hate to have you do all that work and then not credit, get credit for it. Okay, um, now uh, as far as grading is concerned, once you are in the system, and I'm going to go back and, and uh, log in here, you will see when you've completed things, you notice now everything is red, um, when you've completed a particular exercise, then it'll turn green. If you've completed it partially, it will be yellow. So it's always going to show you what you've done. These grades are never going to be lost, and this is going to be your definitive information that you have completed something and you, that you will get credit for your work. So you don't need to worry about your work not showing up somewhere else, at least not before the end of the semester. Um, this is the only place that the work needs to be uh, shown as complete. And as long as you have completed the exercise, you will get the credit and it will turn green and show that you've completed um, the assigned work. Now, if you do experience any problems with Circuit Tutor, um, there are uh, some frequently asked questions. Um, which, and I forget where that, is, that link is right now, but uh, there are some frequently asked questions. Um, and if you do have any bugs, then you can report those bugs uh, to me. Uh, by sending an email, but when you do so, and in fact the email is right here, um, be sure to include all the details about what happened. So anytime the system crashes, for example, it automatically uh, sends us a screenshot of what you were doing at the time, as well as a, a number of pieces of technical information that we can use to try to uh, solve that problem. However, if it's doing something like, for example, uh, you entered a, an answer and you're sure it's right, and Circuit Tutor said it was wrong, for example, that will not get reported automatically to us, and so you need to do that. So when you're reporting bugs, please use the print screen button on your computer keyboard, um, or you can use something called the snipping tool, which you can find uh, if you just type snipping tool 
uh, right here, for example. It's generally installed on Windows, and that'll allow you to take a, a portion, a, a screenshot of a portion of your screen. But it's probably easier just to use the print screen button. Uh, please don't use cell phone cameras to do that because the images are often blurry or incomplete and don't give us all of the information we need to address your issue. Um, please do be sure to report um, if you think it's uh, marking an answer incorrect when you think it's correct, um, then show us uh, both the screenshot of where it's saying it's incorrect and move things around so we can see everything on the screen and then also show us what answer it displayed after you uh, gave up, for example. Um, so that we can compare that and then uh, solve your problem uh, very efficiently for you. Okay, there is also a user guide for Circuit Tutor um, that should be posted um, somewhere on your instructor's website, hopefully, um, and that can provide some additional information to you. Um, now, there are some issues if you're using a uh, Macintosh, um, then there should be some instructions posted for you. Uh, but basically, most of the software uh, has to be run on a Windows-based downloadable program, and that does not run on a Mac or on Linux. So if you're using a Mac or Linux operating system, um, then you will basically either need to use a campus computer that has a Windows operating system available, um, and then you can install Circuit Tutor very easily there. You would just go down here where it says download the software, click on that, um, and then that would install it. It takes typically about you know, less than 30 seconds to install the program. Um, on the other hand, if you want to put it on your own machine and you have something that's not a Windows machine, you can use the VirtualBox uh, system from Oracle, uh, which you can download for free. Um, and that's a safe and convenient way to install Windows on your own uh, Mac system or Linux system. Um, and you can consult uh, at ASU, for example, the Windows uh, 10 can be obtained for free. At other institutions, you would need to consult with your instructor as to what your options are there. But you cannot do these software-based uh, homework, homework um, on a Macintosh, with the exception of the web-based tutorials, which would include, for example, Bode plots, Laplace transforms, and the inverse Laplace transforms. Uh, but the rest of the exercises do require um, a Windows machine. Okay, so what is the Circuit Tutor philosophy or the idea behind this program? Well, the idea basically is to promote success in introductory circuit classes to help everybody pass the course and do well in the course. And our belief is very strong that every student who has the prerequisite knowledge um, will be able to do that. And this program is designed um, in order to help you. So one of the things you'll notice in Circuit Tutor, this is sort of the main screen on the downloadable software after you've installed it uh, that you will see. Um, if we go into a typical exercise here, for example, this one on series parallel, um, well, the first thing you notice, there may be a, a pretest um, that you would complete to measure your knowledge going in. Um, I'm going to skip that right now. Um, and then in many cases, there will also be an introductory tutorial, which will explain some of the uh, concepts you need to do the work. And that's going to be on the web. Um, but be aware that completing this introductory tutorial does not give you credit for the exercise. You have to come down and actually complete the required levels of the game in order to get credit. So the introductory tutorial is to help you, but it does not count for the credit. Um, in tutorials that don't have the introductory tutorial like this, um, then you'll need to rely on your lecture notes and your textbook to provide that background. So I'm going to skip that for right now. And one of the key features of Circuit Tutor is that we have multiple levels of difficulty that are gradually graded. They start out typically very easy problems and work their way up to more complicated uh, problems. And there may be anywhere from two to uh, perhaps four levels of difficulty in each exercise. Um, also notice that you have the option to show completely worked examples at any of these levels, which will correspond almost exactly to the problems. Now the problem won't be the same but it will be very similar. We use the same exact program to generate the examples as we do to generate the exercises. So you're guaranteed to have something at the same level. So for example, here's a, an exercise in the series parallel thing uh, where it basically shows you um, some elements that are in series and it'll walk you through this, showing you those in series, these are in parallel and so forth. And it'll also give you detailed explanation. Oftentimes, if you want a more detailed explanation of something, you just ask for that, and it'll give you actually a very detailed explanation of everything. I'm not going to uh, go through this in detail right now, but that's the general principle. Um, then when you do an exercise, you'll see a very similar type of problem. Um, and again, this is just generic. Uh, this is one type of exercise. In this case, you would just click on these elements to identify uh, things that are in series and parallel. So that's the general approach is that you have uh, both exercises. Um, and uh, examples that are um, 
always the same. The other thing to notice is that all the problems are actually going to be different for every student. And every time you generate a problem, it's going to be actually created on the fly by the computer. So if I were to click this problem here, I get one. Now if I were to give up on that and ask for another, then you notice it's a different diagram. And that's always going to be the case. Not just the numbers in the problem, but the actual circuit diagrams are always unique. And one of the things that means is because we randomly generate our problems, there's no such thing as a solution manual uh, for this system. So don't bother looking for one online because it wouldn't be helpful to you. Um, and obviously you cannot copy your friend's uh, uh, paper either. And so basically the idea is to try to reduce the temptation to do something that would actually not help you learn very well. Um, and it's also, the other benefit is because we randomly generate these problems, we can give you an absolutely unlimited supply of exercises that are fully explained. And uh, furthermore, if you, for example, can't figure out a particular problem, say you look at this and say, I just don't know what to do in this problem, I can't figure it out, well that's fine. All you have to do, you always have a button here that uh, allows you to give up. And notice also that there is help and in most cases video help also available that will actually show you how to work a similar problem, not this one, but a, a very similar one. Um, so you can use those options, but if you still can't get it, you can always give up and that will not decrease your score in any way. So you have no grade penalty for giving up. Obviously you won't get credit for working this problem because you didn't finish it. Um, and if you get close to the end, then you may be less anxious to give up because uh, you wouldn't get credit for it, but you can always repeat another problem of exactly the same type. So there's no grade penalty ever for giving up. And that's an option you can use because when you do give up, it's gonna show you the answers and that will hopefully help you learn so that the next problem, um, you'll be able to do it um, hopefully on your own. And if not, you can give up again as many times as you like. There's never a penalty for giving up. Now, one of the things you'll notice when you do this um, is that if you make too many mistakes on a problem, you will lose credit for that problem. And sometimes people ask me, well, why do you do that? Why do you limit the number of attempts? Um, and the answer is, it's not really limited in the sense you can always keep trying as long as you want, you're just not going to get credit. Um, but the reason that we basically limit at that is that if you succeed at a problem simply by guessing, by putting in many different answers until you find the right one, that doesn't really demonstrate that you understood the principles. Because if you understand the principles, then you should be able to work the problem without making very many mistakes. Now we all make uh, uh, sort of dumb mistakes now and then just by accident. Um, and so that's why it does allow a few mistakes to be made. Um, but the idea is if you're having to guess too much, basically it means that you don't yet understand the problem. And so we want you to continue working so that you'll be able to do well on the exams. Obviously on the exams um, or tests, you won't be able to just keep guessing until you get the right answer. And so we want to make sure that you're adequately prepared for that. So that is why we limit the number of uh, wrong answers that are allowed. But again, there's never any penalty um, if you lose credit for a problem, you can simply work another one. So you'll always get the full credit. Um, and the grading is based on completion of the exercise. It is not based on your pretest score. It is not based on your post-test score. Although I would say if you're getting a low post-test score, that does indicate that you probably need to go back um, and do some more exercises just so that you'll be able to do well on the exams. Likewise, if it's taking you a long time to work the problems, that's probably also an indication that you don't understand it um, as well as you probably should. And that would indicate, again, you should probably come back. And even after you take the post-test, you always have the opportunity to come back and practice more. So when you're reviewing for a test, for example, you can come back and do some of the exercises again as many times as you like. There's no limit on that. And again, there are always going to be new exercises, so you won't get bored just doing the same ones over and over again. Um, okay, now one of the other philosophies here is this involves what we call step-based tutoring. The idea behind step-based tutoring is to help people learn more efficiently. And there's actually quite a bit of research that shows um, that it does, both with this program and with other uh, types of educational software. So to give you an example, let's look at a different type of problem where you're actually going to write some uh, equations for a circuit diagram. So for example, here's one on mesh analysis. Again, we have multiple levels here and we have to work problems. So when I work a problem here, it's going to, well, it gives me some instructions first, but it's going to basically um, accept every step of my work. So for example, if I have to write equations, it's going to look at every equation as I enter it. Now a conventional system, you'd have to write all the equations and then solve them and get a numerical answer that you put in at the end. 
but that might take several pages of work. And you might have even had, not necessarily in this exercise, but in other exercises, you might have to actually redraw the circuit diagram at the very beginning. Well, if you make a mistake redrawing it, then it's not possible to write the correct equations because you're starting with the wrong diagram. And likewise, even if you write the equations correctly, um, solving them would be of no use. And so you could waste a lot of time if you made a mistake early on in a problem, if you're doing a conventional thing where you put in just a numerical answer at the end, which is called an answer-based tutoring, which is the opposite of step-based tutoring. So the idea here is to minimize your waste of time and your frustration, and also uh, to get more efficient learning and hopefully better grades um, in the course as a result. Now, while this is more efficient, um, it does have a downside, which means that because I'm going to put my equations in here to be checked, there's a more complicated interface to enter equations. So for example, here um, it's going to tell me some information that I should read about uh, uh, what I should and should not do. Um, and again, there's also videos here. Notice that there's this video help button up here, which again will show you exactly how to use the interface. If you have any doubts about that or find it confusing, it's always a great idea to look at these videos, uh, such as the one you're watching now, but more specific to the particular uh, game that you're playing. And you're going to have to learn how to, for example, um, choose these terms, um, how to use the drop down to select the right type of equation to write for each different kind of problem, how to put these terms in here, and how to do that correctly. And so that's a little bit more complicated. And again, because there's a learning curve associated with that, that's why we do provide both the written help um, that you can read here, um, as well as the video help, which are little videos on YouTube that you can watch. Uh, we try to keep them as short as possible, but they actually show an example of every problem being worked at every level um, so that you can see exactly how to use those interfaces. The introductory tutorials um, only focus on the concepts and the ideas behind the course material. They do not explain how to use the interface. So if you want to know how to use the interface, the place to look would be either in the help or the video help for that. Okay, and again, the purpose of that is basically just to make the learning curve um, easier for you. Okay. Um, now, one of the other things um, I wanted to show you is, for example, here, there's four different levels. Notice that these are all available right now. And what that means is, if they're all available, if I think that I already understand how to write mesh equations, I don't have to do the easy and the medium and the hard levels. I can go straight to the mastery level. And if I complete the mastery level, I will get credit for those earlier levels. Now, there are some exceptions to that. Um, for example, if in this case, the mastery level covers, covers all of the learning objectives that are in the earlier levels. So therefore, if you can do the mastery level, we're pretty confident that you can also do the easier levels. Now, if you don't understand the topic very well, or you haven't done it before, then you may want to start out on the easy level. That's generally what we would recommend. But if you feel very confident in the material, you can skip up to whatever level you think is appropriate. If you find it's too hard, again, there's no problem. You can simply go back to an earlier level. Um, whatever you feel that you need to do in order to be uh, successful in completing the exercise. But generally, if you complete the mastery level, you will get credit for all the other levels too. And so that's an option that you have um, that you can select. Now, in some cases, if all of the learning objectives are not covered by the highest level, then you may be required to do more than one of these levels um, because there are additional learning, uh, sorry, learning objectives that are covered in those levels that are not in the mastery level. So in that case, you won't have as many options uh, but in this case, you could actually start right on mastery. Okay, so that's something to uh, keep in mind. Now, let me go back into that equation interface again. And, and I know you won't probably know the technical uh, details of how to work this, but let me just offer a few hints um, when you are entering equations. One of them is that you have to select the right type of equation. And this is explained in the video help as to how you would pick the right type of equation. So I'm not gonna go into the details of that right now. But once I pick that, then I would select terms. And I can click on those to bring them down into the place where I'm going to write my equation, or I can drag them. Um, sometimes the clicking doesn't always work perfectly, so you may need to drag. And once I've got the terms down there to form an equation, of course, I will always have to have an equal sign in my equation, because if you're writing equations, by definition, they have to have an equal sign. So if you don't have an equal sign, it's not going to work. And normally, of course, this equation should meet the normal rules of algebraic syntax. Um, so for example, you couldn't have the equal over here because that wouldn't be a valid uh, equation if you wrote it by hand. So it's basically the same thing as writing it by hand, what makes sense algebraically, and then it will be accepted. Now, uh, one of the things that you, uh, and, and also if you put a term in that's incorrect, for example, you say, oh, I didn't need that one, I needed one of these. Well, you can just drag it out there like I did that and then drag a new one in its place um, and maybe put that one back. And you can do that as many times as you need to 
um, or you can even clear the equation and start over again. Um, now you have to fill in these blanks. For example, n means that's going to be an integer. So I might put in there uh, a one. And then I can use the tab key, which is a very uh, a convenient uh, hint, to go to the next field right away. And maybe put that in as two, and maybe that's supposed to be one ohm or something like that. And then I can just tab right along uh, with these fields and very quickly uh, fill things in. So that's a, a hint you can use to do that quickly. Now you may wonder, um, do you have to have the equal sign over here? And the answer is no. You could put it on the left, for example, put the zero over here. Or you could put some of these terms, for example, on the left side of the equal sign um, and not even use an equal sign. As long as it's algebraically correct, it generally will be accepted. Now the only exception to that is sometimes that you cannot uh, put in a single term that combines multiple elements together. So for example, um, if you're writing a KVL equation here, there, for example, for this little loop, there would be three terms you would need to have. Don't try to combine those into one because that will not be accepted. And likewise, you cannot substitute one variable for another variable. But otherwise, algebraic equivalence is accepted um, in the system. Um, another thing to be aware is that sometimes the solutions will actually uh, show you things where there's multiple equal signs or what we call a compound equation. For example, it might have something like this and then actually have a number at the, at the end or something like that. You cannot do that when you're entering an equation. If you try to uh, check that, it's just going to tell you um, that you can only have one equal sign in an equation. So don't try to write things exactly the way they're shown in the solutions um, because generally that's uh, not possible to do if you have more than one equal sign. Okay, so as far as uh, help on the individual tutorials, I urge you to look at the the video help specific to the tutorial you're looking at, that will explain a lot more details. This has just been a very uh, general overview of the system. So good luck in using the system, and I hope you find it enjoyable. Thank you.